we will create a real seven calendar application using stimulus JS and Tui calendar. Tui calendar is a JavaScript schedule calendar that supports dragging and dropping. It supports various types of views as well as efficient management of milestones and tasks. To begin, we'll create our Rails application, which I have done here. Next, we will install the JavaScript for Tui calendar using import map. Next, we will install Rails UJS, which we we'll use for this application. With that, all our dependencies are installed for this application. So next, we'll model the data for our, this um, calendar application. We'll generate a scaffold. We'll call it schedules. And I have a title of type string. A start of type date time. End of type date time. ID of type integer. That will run our migration. We can start our server. Then we update our routes. We set the route of our application to schedules. And there we go. Our next step is to display the calendar on our index page. So, go to our index page. Right about here, we set up a div with a data controller. We'll call this data controller calendar. Inside it, we set up another div and we give it an ID of calendar. Then we can close these. So our next step is to create this next step is to create this controller. We'll rename this controller to calendar. We don't need this anymore. Our next step will be to import the libraries that we pinned in our import map. If we look here, you can see we have our two-week calendar, our code snippet, our date time picker, and our time picker. So we want these libraries here. So I'll go ahead and paste them. We have our calendar, and two-week calendar, and everything else. So to sh show our calendar, we create a new instance of calendar. So we set this dot calendar plus a new calendar. We see documents dot gets element by ID. We set it to calendar. So we're getting we want to render our calendar in this div here where we give it an ID of calendar. And then we set up the so our calendar, we give it an ID of one, a default name, we'll call it my calendar, and we say default view, it can be set to month, it could be set to day, it could be set to year, but we'll leave it at month, we'll give it a color, this then we'll do BG color next and 
compte. Then we set the border color. Set this to red. I set milestone to true. Schedule view to true. Use creation pop up to true. We say use detail. up up to true we set so we've got everything updated here our calendar renders out we can see it doesn't display properly and that is because we've not added the css for it the style sheets for it so we can copy it directly from the github page then we go to our application HTML page and paste it in. So when we refresh here, you see everything loads up well. Our next step will be adding some data to the calendar so that we can fetch the data and display it on the calendar. So first, we'll update our form. Instead of using a date time field, we'll change it to select. And click on new schedule. We have this, so let's give this first item the start. Let's change this to, let's say, 20th. And then we save that. Let's go back to our schedules. You can see nothing displays yet. So we have to define a method that would fetch the data from us from our, from our index.json page. So if we look at this here, you can see we have JSON data here. So we can go ahead to so our JavaScript and our calendar controller. Or define a method to fetch this data for us. So it's, we'll call it get calendar data. We'll set our URL to schedules JSON. Then we'll do fetch URL. Then get the response. We want this response to be converted to JSON. Then for the response we have, we want to go over each element. So we'll call this uh, these elements schedule. For each of these elements. We want our calendar, we want to create a schedule on the calendar. This is so we set the ID to schedule that ID. We set our calendar ID. To one, 
set the title to schedule that title set our category to time and all of this is provided in the documentation we selected a few things that we can easily represent we set the due date class to schedule So it's due date class. Set the location to schedule dot location. And we set the start to schedule dot start. And of course the end to schedule dot end. With that, we can now call this method and I'll connect. So this dot get calendar data. You can call this in our connect method. Let me check our calendar. You can see this is the first item that we created. So if we try and create a second one, let's call it second item. Mm, let's say 14. Let me say, let's leave that at 25th. You can see the second item here. Our next step is to create calendar schedules. First, we must make some changes to our schedules controller. After a successful update or a successful creation, we don't want to be redirected to a new page. We still want to remain on the on this index page. So we go back to our controller, we go to our schedules controller. After create if schedule is saved, we don't want to be directed. Same thing with an update. The same thing when the schedule is destroyed. And then we can come here and do schedule. And call schedule.new. And go back to our index. And here we can render our form. I can schedule at schedule so we have a form here two calendar also provides us with certain event handlers that we can use to create events we will use a before create schedule to create a schedule so when the user clicks on the calendar, a pop-up form will appear. That is, this form will appear. Then the user can enter his referred information, then click on save. And then the request will be made to the database. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go to our schedules that call create calendar schedule. First, we get our calendar, which we previously defined. And then on calendar before create schedule, we want to create a schedule object. Here we define the ID, the calendar ID, the title. Would you get this from the event title? That is what the user enters here. We set the event location, the start and the end. Those are the start here and the end here. With that, we then create the form data. And then we append this information here to the form data. 
and using Rails Ajax or rather using Rails UGS, we create make a post request with our form data to the database. So what we need to do is just import Rails from at real slash ujs and then we call this our new method here create calendar schedule so let's test this out and see we create one on first from view this is the six you can see it was created if we refresh and there we go we have it here we would use another event highlight to update the calendar schedules when we click on an already created schedule like what we have here you can click on edit if we do this you can see no changes were made so we want these changes to be made and persist here and also make a request to the database. So to do that, we define a method called update calendar schedule. First we get our calendar, then on calendar before update schedule, we want to get the changes that were made on the schedule and the previous schedule then we create a form data then we see we check if there's any change here if there's a new change if the end time is changed we append this to the form data if the start time is changed we append this to the form data and then if the title is changed we append this to the form data next we then make an ajax request to the database to to patch it using the schedule ID. So we call this method, which is update calendar schedule. And let's test it out. We click on first from view. Let's change this to updated from view. You can see the changes made on here. And there we go. The change has also been made to the database, so request has been made there. We now define a method that uses the before delete schedule to delete schedules from the calendar. This event is called when we click on the schedule. We look here and click on delete. So let's go ahead and define, the, define this method. We call it delete calendar schedule. First, we get our calendar. Then on calendar delete schedule, we get the event schedule. And from this event schedule, we get the schedule ID and the calendar ID. And with the schedule ID, we can make a delete request to our database using Rails Ajax, rather use UJS. So, call delete calendar schedule. We refresh this and click on delete you can see it's deleted so that is that for our calendar application using 2ejs